Welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about five black magic camera tips that I wish someone had told me earlier. So some of these are gonna be more practical tips where you can go and buy something to improve your experience when filming with the Blackmagic camera. And some of these are just gonna be misconceptions about the camera that I feel shouldn't hold you back from purchasing or from using it. So tip number one comes from Rob Ellis. Rob Ellis has a great channel on lighting breakdowns and cinematography. So what I learned from him is something about dynamic range. Dynamic range is something you hear about all the time. And usually solid cinema cameras have 13 to 16 stops of dynamic range. That's pretty standard. But what I didn't know about dynamic range is that on the Blackmagic camera, when you expose your ISO levels, let's say you're at ISO 100, so the lowest possible ISO, you're actually getting more dynamic range in the shadows. And I'm gonna pull up a chart here. I think it's the same one that Rob Ellis used in his video, but this just gives you a demonstration of the dynamic range in the shadows compared to the highlights at different ISO levels. And the opposite is also true. So when you're using a higher ISO level, let's say 1600, you'll have more dynamic range in the highlights and less dynamic range in the shadows. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're filming, depending on what your scene is, if it has more shadows, if it has more highlights, keep that in mind to get the most dynamic range out of your camera. Tip number two, just because the Blackmagic cinema cameras are not full frame, well, they used to not be, but Blackmagic just released the 6K full frame. So just because their old models aren't full frame doesn't mean that they're bad cameras or that they have bad image quality. There's so much more that goes into image quality than just a full frame sensor. In fact, I think that one of the biggest strengths that the Blackmagic cameras have are their image quality and how natural and how nice they look straight out of camera with a Rec. 709 conversion. So full frame cameras do allow you to capture more of the sensor. And you know, if you're using a 35 mil lens, that 35 mil lens will be true. And then if you're using a black magic camera where it has a super 35, that 35 has about I think it's it's either a 1.35 or a 1.5 crop on the black magic. It's different depending on what kind of crop sensor you have. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is that if you're filming on a Blackmagic camera, you're still gonna have so much flexibility to work with in your image, especially because you have that raw capability. And if you edit in you know, DaVinci Resolve, which I have up in the background, it's just gonna allow for a really nice color grade process and allow you to change things like white balance and exposure, your black levels, in post, which is incredible. All right, tip number three is that the file sizes are enormous. And you might think, okay, yeah, that's obvious. It's filming in a raw codec. But if you're coming from something like a DSLR where you just stick a 64 gig SD card in, this is completely different. Let me grab my T5 two terabyte SSD. So this is pretty much what I use to film on my Blackmagic camera all the time. You have your Samsung T5 SSD, two terabytes. And then you have a USB-C cable that goes straight into the Blackmagic camera. You need to be aware that you're gonna have to spend more on media. When you start to buy higher levels and more expensive cinema cameras, everything becomes more expensive. And it sucks because you think, okay, I'm gonna spend three grand on this camera or 10 grand on this camera, and that's it, I'm good. But you have, to rig it out with a cage, you have to get media. And you know, if you buy red cameras, all of that stuff is proprietary and it becomes even more expensive. So it's it's not that bad with the black magic camera, you know, comparatively to red cinema cameras, but just be aware that you're gonna run through two terabytes of an SSD in about five hours of filming in 24p. If you go up to 50 frames per second, you're gonna run out in about two, two and a half hours. And in saying that, there are ways to combat that if you really need to get a full eight hours of filming out of your camera for some reason and you don't have any extra media storage, you can go down into ProRes RAW or some lower uh, resolution formats and you can actually save yourself some storage space. So if you need that, look into it. And another thing I would say is that you're going to need tons of archival footage because if you work with a client for six months or longer, maybe a year, two years, and they want you to keep storing footage for them because you want to use it in future projects, 
you're going to need tons of hard drive space to go back and access that. And that's something that you don't really think about when you're filming on a DSLR because you might just buy one 10 terabyte hard drive. But if you're filming on the Blackmagic consistently, you're going to need to purchase a lot of external hard drives. So just keep that in mind. Tip number five is that the functionality of a Blackmagic camera, let me just pick it up here. It is chunky, right? Like it's, it's, it's bigger than DSLR or a mirrorless camera for sure. And it weighs a lot more as well. So you might be thinking that the functionality for getting vertical clips for social media, which is what everyone wants now, it might be a little bit worse. But I would actually say that it's almost easier to film in horizontal, like I filmed this whole project that you're seeing on screen in horizontal and I cropped in vertical for the client because it just has such incredible resolution that you can crop in from 6K horizontal to vertical and it still looks really nice. While you probably won't be, well, I've never switched it over and filmed vertical because I like having the flexibility of being able to crop in and if the client ever wants to use something for their website or something for a commercial, you're not limited to that footage that you only filmed in vertical. I think that's, it's a dangerous place to be. If you negotiate that, okay, this footage is only going to be used for social media content, then I would say, okay, bring out like an FX30 or an FX3 and film some social content with that. But if you're not sure if they're going to want to use it in the future or down the road, I would say film horizontal with a high res camera and then crop in and post. It still looks amazing. And another really important thing that I see for some reason a lot of people just miss out on is use an external monitor with guidelines, with grid frames so that you can know how it's gonna look after you crop in and post. I see a lot of people mess up their framing, especially when they're just starting out uh, filming with cameras. They don't turn on any sort of grid lines and then they end up you know, tracking the subject. Sometimes he's on you know, the third line and sometimes the, the subject is in the center line. And then when you try and make a video out of that, it's really difficult because the framing is inconsistent, right? So keep your framing consistent with grid lines in your camera. You can either use the screen on the back of the Blackmagic, which is really nice. Or like I said, you could mount um, a, a screen up here, which I always recommend because having a five inch, a seven inch screen on set to look at your framing, your focus, making sure everything is really sharp and dialed in, false colors, all of those things, highly recommend. All right, and the last tip, bonus tip, because my other one was stupid, so I'm coming up with this one right now, <laughs> is use a uh, easy rig instead of a gimbal. Okay, I think Gimbals are great for, like I, like I mentioned before, Sony FX3, FX30. Those fit really nicely on a gimbal. And while, yes, this Blackmagic camera can technically fit on an RS3 Pro or an RS4 Pro that just came out yesterday, um, it can technically fit on them. It's not fun to balance. It is pretty awkward. Um, you can get great shots on a gimbal, don't get me wrong. You can get really nice sweeping shots, but then you start to get into the range of needing someone to pull focus for you if you're really doing dynamic stuff um, or hooking up a LiDAR system to it, which I would say isn't super reliable yet. In my opinion, getting an easy rig is the way to go. At least for me, I've used an easy rig on every single shoot that I've been on since I've had it, which is like two years now. It was like 2000 Canadian. It's really a solid investment and I cannot recommend it enough. And one caveat to that is that there is lower quality brands, like I think Flycam or something like that. You can get cheaper alternatives, but I would really, really try and get the real version. It's made in Sweden. They're a great company and everything they make is super high quality. So that just about wraps up our five Blackmagic camera tips. If you did enjoy this episode, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.